Okay, so what we're going to do is show you roughly, or quickly, how to put a base coat plaster on a wall, yeah? This is a rendered wall, uh, so it's really hard. Uh, I wanted to render it, but to be honest, it's so, um, it's it, uh, literally the profile is, uh, well, look. <laughs> it's, um, it's really quite bad. Yeah, if you can see I can put my hand here, but it's touching there, it's touching here. So the profile of the wall is really bad. So we, you're left with two choices. You either put lots of coats on to get it finished flat and looking lo lovely and flat and brilliant, or you just go with what you got and make it thicker where it's thick, you know, where it's hollow. And thinner where it's not and um, I think the best material to do that with would be a backing plaster because it's lightweight so we'll do a mix we'll clean up first and then we'll do a mix and um, yeah I'll show you how, to, how, how it goes on so whatever vessel you use uh, I'm using this bucket about a third of the bucket, yeah? It gives you plenty of room to mix it and add your stuff. Okay, so as we know, water is our best friend when using as uh, well, anything on cement based products. This is going to suck up moisture a lot. This was the outside of the house originally, so it's not going to be so bad. But the new stuff, we need to wet down a lot. Like so. The old stuff, just so uh, yeah. it's not that absorbent, the old stuff, so it's not going to be too bad. Like I said, it's oxidised and weathered, being on the outside of the house for, I, I should imagine, a fair, a fair uh, portion of time, so the new stuff really will need it, it'll just suck moisture out of anything you put on it. And as we know, uh, clay tiles, did you all suck moisture as well? So. Yeah. 
Yeah, hey. As you can see, this piece of cement here is drying out already. Look. Uh, so if you put this, well, not so much this, it's quite a, a wet, sticky product, but if you put sand cement directly on this, it would just fall off because it, it, this would just suck the life out of it. So, so this, like I said, this is, um, I suppose you call it like a backing plaster or first coat plaster. Uh, it's very light um, and fluffy, a bit like marshmallow and very sticky. Nothing like sand cement at all, yeah? So this, because of that, we can put this on much thicker than sand cement, which, because this ball is very warped and bendy and all over the place, this is probably the best stuff to use. And we'll probably leave it with that type of finish, like a rustic, a rustic finish. Stay, it stands up on its own basically. So uh, we can just put it on nice and thick, like spreading marshmallow. Last evening stuff, but unfortunately, my lovely property is lovely to use. Unfortunately, you can't use it outside. Because uh, it's uh, by no means waterproof or has any waterproof properties at all. Let's see how well it spreads, see how well it spreads and goes on. See this now? Ah, uh, you've got brick, um, clay, old. Uh, render bits of granite, it just sticks to everything. The closest for you guys in the UK, the closest gypsum product to this, or British gypsum product, would be a product called hardwall or sometimes browning they call it, but it's basically a backing, a backing plaster. For internal works, and uh, I love it a bit. So that's about half done. Uh, I'll do one more mix. The same again, third of the bucket, mix it until the right consistency. However you like to work it. If this is a bit thick, <laughs> I only made it thicker because I know I have a lot of uh, depth differences, yeah? So nice and thick and sticky, um, does the job. Hello everyone. Well, as you can see, I'm down with the bees this morning. Uh, I'm going to do a quick inspection and take off all these, um, all the extra poly polystyrene to protect against the sun, all the extra insulation because, um, yeah, the sun as from t tomorrow is going to be 30 degrees a day. As from tomorrow, hopefully it will be around about oh, mid 20s and then lower. So all good. So we're going to take all this off and do a quick inspection while we're here. And also, it's our last chance to um, to sort of gather any honey, if there is any. Uh, we've got one, two, three hives which could potentially have some honey. So we'll have a look. And if we take if we take some honey, I'm going to have to go and get some feeder and uh, you know some sugar water and feed them. But um, I'll have a look and see how it goes. So this hive, I've taken the honey super off 
uh, all the frames are empty, no honey in them. So I've taken the frames out, left the super there so the bees can find their way home. Taken the queen excluder off, yeah, so they can uh, make themselves nice and cozy for winter. Uh, I've wrote down uh, three brood in there, I've seen the queen, all looking really, uh, really cozy, all good, really healthy, no varroa, um, no wax moth, so it's all good. On to the next one. Okay, so these hives, this one here, very small, um, one, like a half a frame of brood, very, very small, but nice and clean, absolutely spotless inside. Uh, if I can find a frame of brood, maybe a couple of frames of brood, to boost this one, I'll uh, probably from this hive, I'll um, I'll bring them over. But at the moment, yeah, really small. Um, this hive, I've taken one, two, three frames of four frames of honey, because this is the one with the messed up um, honey boxes. I used a full frame. I used a full brood box. For honey so I've taken three full frames of honey from here uh, the rest these have got bits of honey in but they're not capped so they're not really any good for eating um, I'll try and so I might put some food for feed frames in with these lot if I can get some more brood we'll see how it goes okay sadly that hive had nothing in it at all completely empty all the frames are clean um, so I'll put it up there with the rest I'm going to take it up because if I leave it here, it'll get wax moth in it and that'll be a nightmare. So, it's really odd. Just completely abandoned. Um, don't know enough about this yet to understand why. But uh, not one single bee in there. It's a really odd situation with our... We saved the queen in this one, or tried to. I put some brood in there and a honey frame, etc. And basically there's like a handful of bees. And... The queen, all on her own. So I don't know what to do. Um, she's not laid anything. She probably the hot weather has probably killed her ability to lay eggs or something. But um, yeah, poor old girl. There she is, and she's got about 20 guys with her, uh, as you can see here. And that's it. And the hive looks like it's been robbed. Um, I'll have a think to what I can do with her. I can only hope that somewhere I've got the two hives I've got left hasn't got a queen, but uh, I doubt that very much. So yeah, she's not laying, so I'll just put it back in there and, and she might do. I don't think there's enough bees in there for her to, to look after her. Uh, there's some honey, but it's old. Oh dear. So, uh, yeah, this one here, uh, three frames of brood, all good, I've taken this super off of the said. This one here, uh, two, two frames of brood, uh, not looking terribly good, but they're all looking healthy, but not looking very strong, there's quite a small colony. These guys here have three and a half, four frames of brood, um, <coughs> lots and lots of food and honey, so they're looking good, um, and yeah, poor Queenie. Yeah, we'll see how she goes. We'll see how she goes. And then this one here, I'm just taking the other uh, brood box off the top. Um, I've taken the ones with, with honey out, obviously. There's loads of honey in the hive, so I'm not worried about them starving. Unfortunately, I don't have a, any enough brood or anything to give these guys, so they're fairly small. So it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five hives which would probably last through the winter uh, although we've got the second spring now so there might be more flowers coming out etc uh, give them more food so we'll see how it goes oh, sort of here. I'm not sitting down because I'm lazy it's a, a head height issue Not anymore. 
And see how thick you can put this stuff on that. This is this is my finger. It's nearly two inches thick. If you need it to be. Maybe not all in one go, but uh, certainly nice stuff to work with. I don't suppose I've said much about how to actually apply this and get it on the trowel and off the hawk onto the trowel, etc. So, really quickly, uh, scoop it out in the bucket with a bucket trowel or a cut off um, brickish trowel. Onto the hawk as much as you can hold up, would be handy, so less trips the better. And then you literally, with this stuff, because it's thick. You just scrape it off the top, there, yeah, and then just put your trowel against the wall and push it up, yeah, against the wall like that and just, not the best of all to demonstrate on because it's so uneven, but uh, in the last little bit, scoop it right off so your hook's clean, and again, the same principle, put it against the wall, yeah. And uh, <laughs> literally got half a bucket more to make, which I'll go and do now. <sighs> so, uh, just to reiterate, the this is uh, what do you call it? backing plaster or base plaster. Yeah, uh, nice and thick and fluffy. So we scoop it out of the bucket. Onto the hook once you've got the consistency right. Depends how you like to use it, and also it depends how thick you need to put it on. So if you, if you need to put it on thicker, it needs to be thicker because uh, if it's too thin, it'll just run down the wall. But like icing the cake, you know, if it's too thin, it'll just run. Nice and thick, it'll stay where it is. So uh, from then on, so if I do this bit from here to there, basically I'm doing that to get it onto the trial. Trial against the wall. Yeah, simple. And just repeat that process. A little bit there. It's like anything, the more you do, the better you get at it, you know? So I need lots of practice. <laughs> Which is why I chose to uh, use this stuff rather than sand cement so I can just, it's easier to shape it, you know, this, this wall has got some weird shapes and lines so this is the best stuff. If you've got a wall that's a bit all over the shop, you can use this um, and it's easy stuff. So again, we'll start from the bottom. Here, another one. What I like to do on edges is start from the edge, like that, and away from the edge, yeah? A little bit in the corner, here. Over, I can fill in any bits where it needs a bit of adjustment. So I may leave it, I'll just go over it a bit and leave it very much like it is, so I'm not 
too fussed about the finish uh, as long as it's smoothish I can put some uh, a couple of coats of paint on it it'll be fine so I'll just go over it now and finish it off and then show you what it looks like at the end I've decided to go with a, a rougher finish. Uh, I might try put a sponge on it in a minute when it's drier, but um, it doesn't look bad with a few trial marks and stuff in it. It gives it that bit more of a rustic look, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm quite pleased. I could keep going over it, keep going over it, get it all smooth. I'll wait and see when I finish and see what it looks like. It wouldn't take a lot to just uh, sponge it off maybe and make it a bit more appealing. Ah, I quite like it with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Trial marks in it. Looks quite nice. Because the wall's so uneven, it gets quite tricky to get rid of all the trial marks. You can't really do that until it's dead flat. Because you're bound to catch, you know, if it's hollow, you're bound to catch the top and the bottom of the trial. So Right. It certainly looks better than when I started anyway. I think I'm getting the feel of this. It's the type of stuff you could just keep playing with it and keep playing with it and it's not going to ruin it, you know? Like if you do that with render, uh, it'll get softer and wetter. In the end, it'll end up falling off. But with this stuff, it's a lot easier to use. You know, so you can just keep playing with it until you get the right, well, until you get what you're happy with. In fact, you have to get what the wife's happy with. So there we have it guys, all finished. I need to clean uh, the roof off, but uh, I'm fairly happy with the finish, so it'll be staying like that and then painted white. So there you go, it's all done. Uh, sorry if I sound a bit wheezy and out of breath, but I'm still having a few chest issues. Uh, I'm still taking antibiotics, so obviously the infection hasn't gone, but there we go. Uh, now, let's go and see what Andy's doing in the kitchen. Okay, so now we're in the kitchen, a big argument going on. Yes! yes. Fight, fight, fight! So what have we got going on yes. here? Sorry, hang on a minute. First of all, yeah. I'm not doing the cooking today. Ah, Sandra's doing the cooking. <laughs> so what, what have we got here then? I don't know. So I'm tell us, Sandra, tell us, tell us, what's, what's going oh, on? Wait, wait, look, look, look. Lemon, lemon yeah. cake. Lemon cake. Yes. Okay, okay. And this is all in so, Dutch. Yeah. And? Yeah, this is... Th this That's is easy, isn't it? Um, room... Room, room Bolton, uh, okay. Sweeken, yeah, yogurt, I got that one. Citroen, yeah. put a Citroen car in it, look. Uh, 2CV? I, 
I rang bar for the baking soda. Got that one. And uh, uh Bloom. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I, at so, least I tried. Well, you have the butter. Yeah. Yeah. The flour. Uh huh. With the salt, the baking powder, and the sugar. <laughs> sugar, eggs, some yogurt. Uh huh. The chest. And juice zest from one lemon. lemon and the juice from one lemon. Okay. And, and now then I'm being instructed. Right. I have to a mix everything dangerous. together. So, so what well, all in one go? No, you start with the flour and the salt and the baking powder. Oh no, sorry, I do it wrong. <laughs> Take two. You start with sugar. Yeah, oh, sugar. Is sugar. Much. And then with the butter. Now this is very soft because it's been yeah. out, and we only need with the scales gone. Well, it's a three fifty. You need how much? Two fifty. Yeah. So well, cut it right there. Do you do it back? Oh, right do then? you want? Do you want it measured? Yes. No. It's two fifty. It looks two twenty-five. Yeah. So we wanted that bit. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely. this is. I think the. the right. So we'll put that in here. Yeah. <laughs> like it's more like this. Right, put that bit in there. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, how not to bake. Yeah, <laughs> not episode. Episode. I've seen oh. I've seen kids programs to bake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they were puppets. <laughs> and I've seen all Andrea's videos. Yeah. To put so everything, everything yeah. in there. Good girl. So good girl. Good girl. I've seen kid frozen, so. Right, that, and right. what I always do is with this, use it I to grease the thing. So I should come over here and cream away this one. Oh, like, so you can. <laughs> you can. So nice. Creaming nicely. Then you can put the flour in. Stir it. And then I'm going to put lemon juice. Lemon juice into yogurt? Yeah, uh, 100 gram of Greek yogurt. Okay. So not, you don't want to have the. Oh, that'll be a little surprise in the cake, wouldn't it? Actually, leave a pip yeah. in there. Lemon surprise. Oh, oh lemon okay. surprise. Oh. <laughs> again. Yes, unfortunately our lemons do have seeds in them. Yeah. So again, is this to get like a bread crummy sort of consistency? Yes. I know all the terminology here. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Mother. So it's all the lemon juice from that. Yeah, yeah, all the lemon juice. And I forgot to do the zest thing because I <laughs> you were so keen to cut the lemon. Yes. That's okay, we can zest it each half anyway. So it's the juice and the zest of a lemon, yeah? Yes. Okay. Okay. Then we take the eggs yep. one by one. You can and mix put it in them there. in. Yes. And one by Without one. the feathery bits. Yeah, no feathery. Whole eggs. Whole eggs, just, and then stir it, and then the other one. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How many eggies? Normally four, but they're really but tiny. You're complaining so about the size of my chicken's eggs? No, no, <laughs> never, 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 never. But I think five is better then. Oh, yeah. Okay, so while the girls are get busy cracking eggs and mixing them one at a time in the pan, yes, I forgot to do something. I make it. I made a poolish two days ago, uh, and it's been in the fridge for a couple of days. Uh, so I, I had 800 grams of flour, strong, strong white flour, 800 milliliters of water, uh, 10 grams of 
dried yeast and 10 grams of honey. Uh, and now I've just added another 400 grams of flour and I'm going to add about 20 grams of salt. And back again. After we put in the eggs, we can do the yogurt with the lemon zest and yes. spatula. It's a really different one than that oh, I have. Yeah, I have this one. I think get as much out as we can. Yes. I saw down the sides here, Sandra. What were you oh, doing, girl? Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous of the camera. Oh. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> So apparently it's all mixed up and I'm holding things up now. Yes. And now we are going to put it in here. But do we still need a little bit of flour in here? No. So, yes. Put it all. Oh, Ooh, nearly got that. So you can hear the machinery in the village in the background picking up all the stuff from the festival. To get the bowl a good scrape. Yes. Okay, what so are we it's doing? Almost finished. Then you do a little bit like if it's getting all the thin. air out of it. Yeah, where's and the level it up a bit? Level, level it up. Which one? This one or this one? It does I hate this one. It might be too soft for hands, Santa. Yeah, yeah, I have a harder one at home. Okay, oh. so. So, so I'm just finished with this. When the oven's up to temperature, we're going for uh, 50 minutes or so at 160 um, with no fan. Yeah. And while they're doing that, I've got the dough, dough hook on here. The salt and the extra flour is in there. Oh. And we'll give it a whiz for, I'd say, 10 minutes. Done, they probably connect yeah. the But at the moment, it's um, now she's, 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 I'm not drunk yet. Yeah? <laughs> 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 I hold like the flashy colours there as well. Oh, cheers, mate. Yay! Oh, oh, so the cake uh, is out the oven now, nice and cool. But, oh dear, someone's already been at it. I don't know who. <laughs> Huh? Oh dear, oh dear. I'm the evidence here. So that's it for another week, week Friday. <laughs> Friday. Friday, Friday, guys. And um, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget, keep liking, subscribing, and, and commenting. Uh, that'd be lovely. Uh, big shout out to um, our friend Morton uh, at My Playhouse. Uh, right at the end of this, a little clip of the stuff he's, he's been here snooping around and uh, made a video so uh, if you want to I'll put a link in the description you can you can uh, have a look, go, have a look at yeah. uh, his stuff his great channel as well uh, really techy stuff as you know if you're into that sort of thing and um, yeah oh and uh, we're all alone now Sandra and Raymond have gone uh, good trip guys um, yeah thanks uh, for lovely having you here yeah. really nice have a few laughs and and giggles, actually lots of laughs and giggles. Far too many late nights. And far too many late nights. But uh, it's all good, so um, yeah. So, That's it. Yep. That's it, guys. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I am here with Nick from Project Portugal. So this is just a quick 30-second uh, blast of uh, the things that Morton recorded while he was here. Uh, just to give you some, um, like a different perspective, someone else's point of view on the crazy stuff we get up to. But... Uh, yeah, I uh, we love to have Morton here. He's he's a he's a funny man. Um, so yeah, uh, go over to his channel by all means and have a look at some of his stuff. I think you'll love it. So Morton's channel is all about IT stuff. Uh, he also does heating, insulation, uh, green power, alternative energy, solar power, and wind power. All sorts of stuff like that. Um, yeah, lots of stuff which is far too technical for me to understand. And. Here's just a few still shots of uh, the wonderful sights around the Serra d'Estrella, or on the Serra d'Estrella. So, um, yeah, Sandra and Raymond took, took a few of these. Uh, they went up there one day. Uh, 
somewhere we will go and in the future and make a video of, I'm sure.